G'day legends and welcome to another video. I thought today, mainly because it is nearing on 37 degrees and I can't be bothered putting on all my riding gear, I might talk about this here rally fairing uh, and try and encourage you to make your own. So if you got a dual sport, dirt bike, whatever it is, and you like the look of these uh, windshielded things, you just don't like the old 90s uh, square headlighty halogen look, I'm going to show you how I made mine and uh, sort of give you a little few tips and tricks as to how you might plan yours out. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Now the core of the rally screen itself is quite simple. We have a windscreen. This is off of a Kawasaki Z800, I think about a 2013 model. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, and just some fluted three mil alley that I picked up from my local hammer barn. Uh, this stuff retails for like 20 bucks a length for about a meter. You could do the whole thing with a meter. I used about three meters because I've made many uh, alterations to it. So I have to keep picking up more every time I make a new version. Uh, but it's nice and easy to do. So why not give it a go? Now, like I said, all we basically do is we start the core flute, uh, our fluted aluminium. Uh, and you'll want to find a couple of mounts to mount that to your triple trees on your forks. All forks have some form of uh, bolt holes on them. You might need a little bit of angle or something to pick them up. Uh, from there, literally in the vise, I just put this in and bent it up to the right shape that I wanted. I bolt it straight to the side. Bolt my headlights to that, or my spotlights to that. And then again, this just fits straight over and bolts on. And that's a rally fairing. 30 seconds, real quick, real easy. That's how it's done. If only it were that easy, right? Uh, look. That's the basics of it, but if I pull you off your stand here, uh, I can actually show you on the bike. So on the, I've got YZ450 forks on my DR. Uh, on the triple itself, I've just used a bit of aluminium angle uh, to run off the standard bolt holes that are there for whatever they're for. Um, and again, screw that there. Yes, it really does bug me that those two screw holes aren't even, but you get what you get. Um, and again, so that just goes straight up to another cross piece that's on the top triple tree. And I've got two e-base bodies uh, bolted to that. Again, I'll put the links down there. I don't specifically rate these other than saying that they work. Um, a lot of people run the steady spotlights for headlights and those things are mint. I just didn't like the price of them at the time that I fitted it. Now you might be able to pick up that the other crossbar that I've got bent up here is actually painted blue. That's just because I had a little bit of rattle blue left over at the end of a project. So the last one of these that I made the other day I did, and the reason I actually have so many spares is I just made a new one to bring the windscreen back in closer to the forks. So this windscreen fairing itself, uh, like I said, it's a Z800 one. It's the same one that they used on, I think, generation two of the ARX uh, rally towers. Now, I did look at the ARX rally tower and the Lynx fairing uh, and the Safari fairing when I was toying around with the idea of doing this. The main reason I didn't uh, go with those options and went with one that's actually mounted to my forks is I like having my headlights and everything crammed nice and close to the bike. The ARX rally tower, uh, from those that I've seen, tend to hang out sort of about here. They do mount to the stem, which lightens your steering a fair bit. But I can tell you right now that three bits of alley, a piece of plastic and two tiny spotties are a hell of a lot lighter than all the steel and stuff that make up the old headlight assembly anyway. So... I definitely save some weight anyway. I don't notice that it's terrible on the steering or anything like that. I've ridden without any of this on, just with bare forks, uh, and it feels exactly the same. Honestly, um, the biggest difference to my steering that I've made has been when I put these big fo these forks on, they're longer than the stock ones, so it's lifted the front of my bike up. It makes the headlight angle terrible, uh, but it's improved the steering on the bike tenfold. Honestly, um, compared to the factory setup for my riding that I do, I love it. It grips so much better on, those, on the loose stuff and in the corners. And these forks are nowhere near as wobbly as the stock ones were. Anyway, spinning around to the back. So, uh, just to quickly cover it, I run a Trailtech Endurance 2 for my speedometer. Uh, I'll come around this side so the light's not too bad. The DR uh, is a simple beast. It doesn't have a taco or anything from factory. So the Endurance 2 sorted me really well for this. It's handlebar mounted. Uh, and this position here, I can see it when I'm standing. I can see it when I'm sitting. So it works pretty well. So it's pretty easy to adjust. 
Uh, you'll see I am actually running risers to give myself a little bit more space here and actually bring the bars further back towards myself. These are ballards forward and back. Oh, sorry. Yeah, forward and back or up and forward. I don't know. Offset risers. I think they're 35 mil. Uh, they're pretty great for me at the moment. I can stand and ride uh, for extended periods of time and I can sit and ride for as long as I can handle the vibrations of a DR. Uh, so that's great. And I've actually got a DRZ uh, ignition because the DR651 has an integrated steering lock and I don't have or need that anymore. Uh, I went off topic. We're talking about building a rally tower for any bike, not just the DR. So uh, the main aluminium piece that runs up that the headlights bolt to, I actually cut a slightly longer one and bent it up and around. Uh, I had to make sure that it cleared my brake line. It actually sits on this side of the brake line because the brake line compresses up the other way and gets longer rather than shorter. Uh, but that's the standard indicator set that comes on a DR, so neutral indicators and high beams. Uh, and then here is my favorite thing, is my tire pressure gauge. This thing saved me multiple times when I haven't noticed the steering get heavy, but I've either had a pinch flat or similar, and uh, or my, would have come off the bike had I not realized that my tires had gone off and this thing wasn't screaming at me. So I rate these things. This one's a hardwired version. It's awesome, and it was worth having its own space. My phone mount's currently up on my handlebars. I don't like the giant big bits of carbon fibery look, the billboard that people have sitting there. Uh, personally, nothing against you if you got one. Uh, but this setup works really well for the kind of riding I do. It's lightweight, it's super simple, uh, and honestly, you could knock it over in an afternoon if you weren't trying to do a fork conversion at the same time that I did this. The headlight, shine it in your eyes, is super bright. I do have a slight issue because my forks are longer and when I sit on the bike it levels down so that headlight levels out a bit too much uh, and my high fender being a YZ fender obviously it lights up a fair bit of the fender but uh, overall it's still way brighter than it ever was uh, from factory it's pretty much as bright as the LED panel that I used to have in there on the stock setup uh, so if you wanted to see what that looked like I don't know go back six months in videos and you'd see that one that's pretty much it. Look, my goal with this video was really simple. I just wanted to show you guys how easy it could be to change the entire look of your bike. I mean, my bike, it's unique. I'm aware it's unique. Some people love it. Some people don't care for it. A lot of old people in servos get really confused by the Yamaha front and an air-cooled engine. Uh, but really, all I'm trying to do is encourage you to get out there and give it a go if it's something you're interested in. Uh, like I said, these things on eBay, that was, I want to say 70 bucks, 30 bucks worth of alley, and I think I paid 30 or $40 for the headlights, and that was it. Everything else has been uh, just investing the time, having a go at it, and then repeating and iterating on it to make it look better uh, has pretty much been the story of it. But that wraps up this video and my video for the week. I have no idea what we're going to be doing next week. We may talk about tires because I got quite the collection growing uh, and I've finally worn in these D606s so um, I've got all my motors there but I can hear my family just got home I got stuff to do have a great weekend legends see you later